In section 8.2, we will continue talking about confidence intervals to estimate a population mean. However, in this section, the population standard deviation will be unknown. So here's a problem. How do we not know the population mean since we're trying to estimate it, yet we magically know the population standard deviation? That's almost never going to happen. Most of the time, we will have the case where we know a sample mean and a sample standard deviation. However, we do not know what the population standard deviation is. When we don't know what the population standard deviation is, we don't use the normal distribution. The normal distribution is used when the population standard deviation is known. When the population standard deviation is unknown, we, would, we will use the student t distribution. So when sigma is unknown, we cannot use the binomial, dist the normal distribution. So instead, we will use the t distribution. We will use the t distribution when the population standard deviation of sigma is unknown. And we can use a sample standard deviation instead. Or when the sample size is small, less than 30. Let's talk about the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom depend on the number of points sampled. It depends on the sample size. So for a sample size n, the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. We denote a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom as t sub n minus 1. So for example, if the uh, distribution of x bar when sampling 30 values would be t sub 29. How do we build a one sample t interval? When do we use a t interval? When sigma or the population standard deviation is unknown, which will happen a majority of the time. So here's the formula. It's the statistic, in this case, the sample mean x bar, plus or minus t star, which is a critical value for the given confidence level, times s, which is a sample standard deviation over the square root of n, where n is a sample size. Okay, so at every step, you draw a picture and find the critical value of t the same way we would find the critical value for z. We can also use technology to find t star, which I will take you guys through. Instead of clicking the normal distribution, we will click on the t distribution, find percentile, two-tailed, and then put in the confidence level. And I'll, I'll walk you guys through this step. Okay, here's an example. Find the critical value needed to build a t interval. Let's find t star 29, which means n equals to 30, and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 29. So we have a degrees of t star 29, it means the degrees of freedom is equal to 29, and we want to build an 80% confidence interval. So if we want to build an 80% confidence interval, that means the area in the middle will be 80%. So how much is left in the two tails? Well, if you take 100 minus 80, that leaves us with 20. But that 20 is split up in two tails. So if you divide that by 2, this will give us 10%. So the area on the left tail is 10%. However, we can't use our normal distribution because we're using uh, a t interval. So let's look at our calculator. Okay, so in our calculator, instead of clicking on the normal distribution, we will click on the t distribution. Okay, and, and in our t distribution, we will click on find percentile because we want the, the t score given uh, the, the percentile in the left tail. So our degrees of freedom in this case will be 29 since we're doing t star sub 29. The degrees of freedom is 29, and the probability in the lower tail is 10%, because the probability in the middle is 80%. That leaves 20% of the two tails. 20 divided by 2, this will give us 10%. Okay, the probability in the left tail is going to be, oops, not 19. It should be 10%. So if the probability in the left tail is 10%, the right tail is also 10%, and the middle is 80. That'd be 10, 10, and 80. That'd be make that'd make 100%. So we know we're doing it right. 
and the t-score is negative 1.311. And we can use two decimals, so negative 1.31. However, remember for a z-score and a t-score for the critical values, we always take the positive. So it'll be positive 1.31. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So this is negative 1.31. This is positive 1.31. There's 10% in the right tail as well. That means 20 plus 80 is 100 percent. And so the t-score, the critical um, the critical value for an 80 percent confidence interval with 29 degrees of freedom is 1.31. Okay, let's build, let's find the critical value for a 95 percent confidence interval where n equals to 12. So if n equals to 12, that means the degrees of freedom is going to be 12 minus 1, or 11. So our degrees of freedom is going to be 11. It's a 95% confidence interval, which means the area in the middle is 95%. So if we have 100 minus 95, that leaves us with 5%, but that 5% is split up in these two tails. So 5 divided by 2 will be 2.5. So we'll have 2.5% in the left tail, and we will have 2.5% in the right tail. But we just need one of them. So let's let's just take the left tail and go back to our calculator. And I'm going to do this one more time with you guys. So let's go back to our, our calculator and put in the information. So how many degrees of freedom do we have in this case? We have, uh, since n is 12, we have 11 degrees of freedom. How much area is in the left tail? That's 2.5%. So I would put 2.5, and this is in percent. And my, my critical value is 2.201, or simply 2.20. Even though it's negative, remember, we take the positive. So this is negative 2.20. This is positive 2.20. And the critical value is 2.20. So here's a summary. If the population standard deviation is known, then we will use the normal distribution to find a z star, which is a critical value. If the population standard deviation is unknown, which will happen in most cases, and we can calculate the stamp sample standard deviation, then we will use uh, the t critical value. We will use a t distribution to find the critical value, where degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. Here are some requirements. There is an independence requirement. So um, the, the sample size has to be less than 5% of population size. We have to, the, the uh, sample collection method has to be random. So simple random uh, selection has to be used. and uh, the, the sample size has to be large enough, or it has to be nearly normal. So either n has to be greater than 30, or n can be less than 30, as long as it's reasonable to believe that the population is normal, uh, unimodal symmetric. And then we write a conclusion sentence. So we are blank percent confident, confident that the interval from blank to blank contains the actual true uh, parameter, whatever the parameter is. And we'll talk more about this in our examples. OK, so um, to estimate uh, the population mean using technology, we can use the confidence intervals and tests, which I'll show you guys in class. But for now, we're going to do all this by hand. OK, so listed below are speeds of cars measured on the 5 freeway near Santa Ana. The, sim the simple random sample was obtained at 3.30 p.m. on a weekday on the speed limit for the road is 65 miles an hour. So um, we randomly selected these 12 cars and uh, found their speed. Now remember, these are only 12 cars out of probably hundreds that uh, are going to um, be on the road around 3.30 p.m. Okay, So we're going to use this data to, to construct a 95% confidence interval. Note that the sample mean, so we have a sample. The sample mean is 60.92, and the sample standard deviation is 4.56. We can easily calculate this using summary statistics in our 
calculator page, but that's already been done for you. So what do we need to construct the confidence interval? Well, the first thing we need is we need the sample mean that's equal to 60.92. We need the sample standard deviation that's equal to 4.56. We need the sample size. Well, how many cars are we selecting? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're selecting 12 cars. And then we need the critical value T star. So how do you find the critical value? Well, we need a 95% a confidence interval. So this will be 95%. That leaves 5% to be split up into these two tails. So the left tail will be 2.5%, and the right tail will also be 2.5%. Now, what's our degrees of freedom? So here, the degrees of freedom will be n minus 1, so 12 minus 1, that'll be 11. Our degrees of freedom will be 11. In the previous example, we did this. We, we calculated a 95% confidence interval for uh, n equals 12, which is 11 degrees of freedom. And we got that our uh, critical value is 2.20. So we're going to use that in our current example. The formula is x bar plus or minus the margin of error, which is t star times s over the square root of n. We plug this in. Um, our sample mean is 60.92. So the sample mean of these 12 cars is 60.92. So the, the average speed of these 12 cars is 60.92. But then that's only the, the average speed of the sample. If you want to estimate the average speed of the population, which is all the cars at that time, there's going to be some kind of error. So the margin of error is given by the critical value, T star, which is uh, 2.20. Forgot to write that down. Okay, so the critical value is 2.20 times our sample standard deviation, which is 4.56, divided by the square root of n, and remember n is 12. Even though the degrees of freedom is 11, remember that n is still 12. So you would have to calculate this uh, you know, in, in a calculator, and here's what you would get. You would get that this equals to 60.92 plus or minus 2.20 times 4.56 divided by the square root of 12 will give you 2.90. So for a confidence interval, it'll be 60.92 plus 2.90 and 60.92 minus 2.90. So to convert this into a confidence interval, 60.92 plus 2.90, this will give us 63.82 miles an hour. And 60.92 minus 2.90, this will give you 58.02 miles per hour. So based on the sample mean, which is 60.92, and a margin of error of 2.90, we can say with 95% confidence that the true uh, population parameter, in other words, the true average of all the cars at 3.30 p.m. on this particular freeway is somewhere between 58.02 and 63.82 miles an hour. Okay, so here's our conclusion sentence. We are 95% confident that the interval 58.02 to 63.82 miles per hour contains the true mean of the cars on this particular road. Okay, so we will work on the rest of this in class.